Basilica of the Sacred Heart on this 15th Sunday in Ordinary Time. And a special welcome to all of you with us by way of live stream or the parish of Your active participation during this Mass in prayers and gestures and in the spoken and sung responses will make all the difference in your worship experience. May God delight in our worship today. Ours here in the church and yours there in the home. The priest's element for this morning's Mass is Pastor
compared with the glory to be revealed from. For creation awaits with eager expectation the revelation of the children of God. For creation was made subject to futility, not of its own accord, but because of the one who subjected it in hope that creation itself would be set free and share in the glorious freedom of the children of God. We know that all creation is groaning in labor pains even until now. And not only that, but we ourselves, who have the first fruit of the Spirit, we also groan within ourselves as we wait for adoption, the redemption of our bodies. The word of the Lord. Sometimes in life, what we create is stillborn. Sometimes marriages, families, and other significant relationships start out okay, even great, but do not last. What seemed sometimes to be like the perfect path, career path, turns out to be a dead end, and we have to start another. So what we build with our hands can tumble down sometimes. But with God, things are very different than they are with us. God's word is like that. What flows from God's mouth is very different from anything that you and I can bring forth. Think about it for a minute with me. A word from God first brought light into creation, and then matter itself, and then life itself. A word from God has stirred human hearts into prophetic speech. A word from God has inspired heroic saintly action. A word from God saved a broken world from hopelessness. 
So unlike so while we have certain capabilities, God's word, very different, has everlasting power. That power can change things for us right here, right now. And that power can bring forth new futures for us. So how is this power of a word of God spoken into our world today? How do we experience it? Well, we hear evangelists preach the scriptures on street corners and over the airwaves. We know about missionaries who bring the gospel across the oceans to the farthest lands. The word of God is proclaimed Sunday in and Sunday out by priests and deacons and pastors. But the power of God's word is not released until we, you and I believers, welcome it, receive it, and combine it with the stuff of our lives and then live our lives based on God's word. God's power. That's how it becomes the incarnate word, the enfleshed presence of God within us, alive in the places wherever it is we go and live and move and have our being. You and I hopefully proclaim that word with our mouths every day. It would be a shame if we feasted here Sunday in and Sunday out at this table of the word and that table of the Eucharist but never utter the name of Jesus the other six days of the week. We proclaim the word of God, we see, with our mouths, yes, but that word is most powerfully proclaimed when we live it out, when it is in our flesh and in our bones, when our spirits have been recreated by it, when we have been reborn because of it. And when the word is in us and we are in the word, well, that's when the world should get ready. Because not only will the situations in our lives change powerfully, but so will the lives of those who see us living the Word, stepping out with it into their lives. We change the world into which we're sent after every Mass with the Word in flesh in us when we do things like loving our enemies and when we forgive those who really hurt us and when we show generosity to the poor, and when we show patience to the impossible person, and when we welcome the stranger, the immigrant, and the refugee, these situations, you see, brothers and sisters, are the rich soil that Jesus speaks of, that Jesus teaches us about. And when we permit this, God's word, to flourish and grow and thrive in us, powerful things happen in the world because of us. You and me, who are disciples of Jesus. And then, like a proud farmer, or a gardener, or a teacher, or a parent, or a pastor, or a neighbor, we can see beautiful, wonderful things and sit back and proudly look at what God does through us. Because I can tell you, if our neighbors and classmates and family friends and family members and friends and co-workers, if they can barely hear God's words of hope and promise, then that's because you and I aren't speaking it loud enough with our own living. So my prayer for you, your homework this week, is to go forth as disciples of the Lord to share this good news. My prayer is that the work of your hands not be stillborn, but be life-giving, giving life to the world around you with the word of life spoken to us in the person of Jesus. And may you bear much fruit. Christ, the only God, Son of God, 
born of the Father before all ages, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made, God substantial with the Father, through him all things are made. For us in man, for our salvation, he can be God from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit, present carnally of Virgin Mary, and we can him. For our sake, he was crucified with the conscious Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life. And the Son, with the Father and the Son, is the Lord and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess my baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. May our prayer give voice now to the needs of all creation, which waits with longing for God's word to accomplish its purpose. That the church, like the sower in the parable, may not judge the soil or measure the seed, but trust God to ensure its bountiful yield. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That nations may resist the lure of unbridled wealth and power and seek instead the glorious freedom of the children of God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That life-saving rains and temperate, temperate weather may nurture crops, giving seed to the sower and bread to the hungry. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our parish of Sacred Heart may generously sow seeds of peace and justice, without counting the cost or estimating the yield. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the word sown among us may accomplish its purpose, yielding fruit a hundredfold in our lives of worship and witness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, that our faithful departed may rejoice to become the first fruits of the new creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O Creator of heaven and earth, you who are ceaselessly at work in the field of humanity, sowing the good seed and awaiting its yield, let your Spirit move in power over us to transform our hearts into the good soil you seek as we offer these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. We have just experienced the two true presence of God in the word proclaimed at the Campo. And now we turn our attention to the altar, where we offer our bread and wine, our monies and tithes, asking God to receive this show of our thanksgiving. Here in the church, are they before or after Mass, you can make your offering in the collection box or at the kiosk at the church's entrance. From home, you can easily make your offering online through the parish website, www.sacredheartatlanta.org, or mail your contributions at any time to the church at 353 Peachtree Street, Northeast, Atlanta, Georgia, 30308. Thank you for your support of the parish. Your faithful stewardship is most appreciated in this difficult time. In this divine exchange, may God know our hopeful generosity. In this divine exchange, may we know God's providential presence. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Look upon the offerings of your church, O Lord, as we make our prayer to you, and grant that when consumed by those who believe, they may bring ever greater holiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Amen. Let us all now give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his Easter mystery, he accomplished a marvelous deed, by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of being now called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so, with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we are praised. Spirit in Christ. 
May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing health. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Gregory John, our Bishop, Bernard and Joe, his auxiliaries, the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. For there, we too hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours. Forever and
For those of you here in the church, please remain in your places, as the clergy will bring Holy Communion to you. After receiving Holy Communion, prayerfully remain in your places until the dismissal at the conclusion of Mass. And for those of you at home, join me now in this prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot, at this moment, receive you sacramentally, come, at least spiritually, into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And consume these gifts, we pray, O Lord, that by our participation in this mystery, its saving effects upon us may ever grow. 
This we ask you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please do visit the parish website to obtain tickets to attend Mass and do bring those with you. If you find that you can't attend after you've already made a reservation, do let us know by email uh, so that uh, a waitlist of Christian can be here in your stead. We are working toward live streaming our Masses so that the whole community can be regularly gathered at the same time, united in prayer. Depending on the course of this pandemic, we will uh, be able to open up more weekend Masses uh, and perhaps weekday Masses as well. We're just awaiting to see how things unfold. We continue to pray uh, for the needs that our world and our country and our area have. Confession and the anointing of the sick are celebrated by appointment. Just send me an email at the parish office to set an appointment with me. Also, thank you for abiding by all our safety guidelines that are designed to respect the life and the dignity and the health of everyone who is gathered here. And so the parting is just as important as uh, the process of arriving. So please, uh, once uh, uh, the deacon and I leave, remain in your excuse, just be seated and enjoy the music uh, until the usher comes to escort you out. Thank you for this prayer and show for one another. The Lord be with you. And be with you. May Almighty God bless you. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. God.